Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to calculate the rate constant and in an earlier video, if you remember, we learned about rate laws and we learned how to write the rate law for a chemical reaction. For example, if we have this chemical reaction right here where A is reacting with B to produce C plus D uh, and we wanted to write the rate law for this chemical reaction, here it's going to be rate equals K times the concentration of A raised to the power of M, where M is the order of this reactant, times the concentration of B raised to the power of N, where N is the order of this reactant right here. And so we learn how to write the rate law for a chemical reaction. We learn how to determine the order of the reactants, and we learn how to determine the order of this entire reaction right here that we see. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus our attention on K. K is the rate constant, and it is different for every single chemical reaction. Okay, so we're going to learn how to calculate the rate constant. And so uh, it says right here that K stands for the rate constant, and that K is specific to each different chemical equation, and the units for K are going to vary as we will learn in this video. And the only variable that has an effect on K is temperature. So if you start changing the temperature of the chemical reaction or of the system, then the K value here is going to change or end up changing. And so it's important to understand that to get the rate of a chemical reaction, you have to take the concentrations of each of the reactants raised to some sort of power or order, and then you have to multiply it by this thing here, the rate constant for that chemical reaction. And so let's go ahead and figure out how we can calculate the rate constant of different chemical reactions and let's take a look at our first example in this first example it says a student performed three trials of the chemical reaction below using the information calculate the rate constant so we have a chemical reaction right here and we're using fake elements or compounds where we have c plus d producing e and so the students in the lab perform this experiment on three different trials. Here's the concentrations of C that they use. Here's the concentrations of D that they used. And here's the rate of the chemical reaction that they determined during the chemical uh, reaction. So we have to calculate the rate constant. And so we know that rate equals K times the concentration of our first reactant, which is C raised to some sort of power or order which we'll call M times the concentration of D raised to some sort of power or order where we will call N. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out the order of our reactant. So let's go ahead and figure out the order of reactant C. So we're going to figure out the order with respect to C. And so if we take a look at C we need to hold the concentration of D constant and then we're going to compare the rate in respect to the concentration of C that we're changing between trial 1 uh, and trial 2 here. And so to figure out the order here we're going to take the concentration that has the highest value which is 0 0.852 and we're going to divide this by the concentration with the lower value which is 0 0.213 and we're going to raise this to the power of M. Then we're going to take a look over here at the rates for trial 1 and 2. We're going to take the higher of the two values here, which is 14.576. And we're going to divide this by the lower of the two values, 0 0.911. And when we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with 4 to the M equaling 16. So 4 to what power equals 16? Well, m here is going to equal 2. So we just figured out the order of our reactant C here. Let's figure out the order of D now. Let's figure out the order of reactant D. So we'll do that over here. Order of D. And to figure out the order of D, we're going to have to hold C constant. And we do so in trial 2 and 3. So we're going to compare the rates for trial and 2 and 3 to one another. And so if we take the higher of these two values right here, the highest value is going to be 
and we're going to divide this by 0 0.750 0. and we're going to raise this to some sort of power that we'll call n and then we're comparing these two values right here these two rates in trial 2 and 3 now because we've held C constant in trial 2 and 3 and we're comparing the concentration of D in trial 2 and 3 to the rate in trial 2 and 3 and so the higher the two values they're the same 0 0.911 divided by 0 0.911 and so if we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with 6 to the n equaling this divided by this, which is 1. So we know that anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. So n here is going to equal 0. So if we take a look here, our order for this reaction, or this reactant D here, is 0. That's going to end up making this 1. So let's go ahead and write our rate law now. Our rate law... is going to equal K times the concentration of C to the M power which is 2 times the concentration of D to the N power which is 0. We know that anything to the power of 0 is 1 so rate here equals K times the concentration of C squared times 1 since D raised to the power of 0 is going to equal 1 so rate here is going to equal K times the concentration of C squared and this is going to be our rate law for this chemical reaction right here but now the question here is asking to solve for K so we have to solve for K so in our final step what we are going to do is we are going to pick one of these concentrations or one of these trials here and we're going to plug that in that information into this formula right here so let's calculate the rate constant let's find the rate constant now for this chemical reaction and so rate equals our rate constant times the concentration of C squared and so if we take a look our rate let's use trial one for example is going to be 14.576 molar per second and this is going to equal K which is what we're trying to find times the concentration of C what is the concentration of C right here it's 0 0.852 squared but let's not forget our unit for C, which is molar or moles per liter. And so if we perform the math here, we are going to end up with, and we're kind of running out of room here, so we'll try to make some room. We end up with 14.576 molar per second equaling K times 0 0.726 don't forget that molar times molar is molar squared if we divide now by 0 0.726 molar squared here and 0 0.726 molar squared here we're running out of room I'll move up here we will have this is going to cancel K equaling 20.1 when we take this number divided by this number we end up with 20.1 and what about the units here well if we take a look at these units here we will end up with molar in the denominator and seconds in the denominator as well as this cancels out with one of these and so we will ultimately end up with m to the negative 1 s to the negative 1 to denote that these are in the denominator so what is the rate law for this chemical reaction right here we'll just call it 20.1 and in an AP chemistry class the units become important but for a general chemistry class the units aren't terribly important at that at this point in time just getting the value for your K constant is the most important part let's take a look at another example 
In this second example, it says a student performed three trials of the chemical reaction below using the information calculate the rate constant. So we have a chemical reaction right here uh, that the students have performed three different trials of. They uh, have the concentrations of NO right here. They have the concentrations of Cl2 right here. And here are the rates for that chemical reaction that they found experimentally. And so what we need to do is determine the rate constant of this chemical reaction right here given this data. So once again, we, we first have to write the rate law for this chemical reaction. And so the rate is going to equal K times the concentration of our first reactant, which is NO raised to the power of M, where M here is the order of NO, times the concentration of our second reactant, which is Cl2 raised to the power of N, where N is the order of our chlorine gas right here. And so the rate law for this chemical reaction right here is rate equaling the concentration of NO to the M times Cl2 to the N power. And so what we have to do now is we have to figure out the order of these two reactants right here. We're going to have to figure out the order of these two reactants, and then we'll be able to figure out the order of the entire reaction, and then we can figure out the rate constant for this chemical reaction. And so let's first figure out the order of NO. And so the way that we're going to figure out the order of NO here is we're going to hold chlorine gas constant in trial 1 and in trial 3. And then we're going to compare the rates while we're holding Cl2 gas constant. And so let's take a look at the higher of these two values right here. We have 1.552. We're going to divide this by the lower of our two values, 0 0.776. We are going to raise this to the M power. And we're going to set this equal to our two rates here. We're going to take the highest rate first and put that in the numerator, 5.04, divided by 1.301. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to get 2 to the power of m equaling. And when we take this and put it in our calculator, we'll get 4. And so 2 to the second power equals 4. So we just figured out the order of M right here. Now we need to figure out the order in respect to chlorine or chlorine gas. So let's figure out now the order of our chlorine gas. And so to do this, what we have to do is we have to take a look at NO and we're going to hold NO constant in trial 2 and 3 and we need to compare the rates when we're holding NO constant uh, we need to compare uh, the, 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 the concentrations of chlorine gas as well. So if we're taking a look at these two right here, while we hold NO constant, we're going to take the highest of our two concentrations, which is 1.364, divided by the lowest, 0 0.682. We're going to raise this to the N power, and we're going to set this equal to the highest of our two rates, which is 10.5. 408 divided by the lowest of our two rates 5.204 this divided by this is 2 to the n power equaling this divided by this which is also 2 so 2 to what power equals 2 well in this case here n is going to equal 1 so we just figured out the order of n so in respect to no it's second order in respect to Cl2, it's first order. And if you were to be asked which of these two reactants has more of an effect on the rate, it's the reactant that has the highest order. So your NO here is going to have more of a, an effect on the rate of this chemical reaction than Cl2. And if you're asked to determine what the order of the reaction is, what is the order of reaction here? Well, that's pretty simple. We simply take the order of this reactant, which is 2, plus the order of this reactant, which was 1, and we have a third order chemical reaction that's taking place here. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to plug these values in, right? Well, let's first figure out what our rate law is going to be here. So our rate law for this chemical reaction is going to be the rate constant, which is what we're going to try to figure out, times the concentration of NO squared 
times the concentration of Cl2 to the first power, right? And we don't need to write this superscript or exponent of one, so rate is just going to equal K times the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of Cl2. And so here is our rate law for this chemical reaction. But we're not asked to find the rate law. We want to find the rate constant. We want to take it a step further and solve this problem here. We want to figure out what K is. What is the rate constant for this specific chemical reaction? So we have to take it a step further. And so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to find rate constant in our next step. or K. And so here is our rate law. So what we can now do is we can choose one of these trials right here and pick the values from these trials. Let's choose trial one for example. The rate here is 1.301. So rate is 1.301 molar per second. And this is going to equal K times the concentration of NO. Well, take a look. In trial one, it's 0 0.776. Molar would be the concentration unit. And we're going to end up squaring this times the concentration of Cl2, 0 0.682. molar. And so now we get a calculator out and we put in these values right here and we're going to end up with 1.30 molar per second equaling K and then this squared times this is going to equal 0 0.411. We have molar squared here times molar here that will give us molar cubed. So we're running out of room here. We're going to try to squeeze this in. Let's try to squeeze this in all over here. And so now let's go ahead and solve for K. So if we have this expression right here, 1.30 molar per second equaling K times 0 0.411 molar cubed. If we divide both sides by 0 0.411 molar cubed, This will now cancel, and so K is going to equal 1.30 molar per second, all divided by 0 0.411 molar cubed. And when we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with a final answer of 3.16. 3.16. Point one six. Let's take a look at what cancels out. This M is going to cancel out with one of these M's, giving us M to the second power. So what we'll end up with here is M to the negative 2, S to the negative 1 power, right? And so the rate constant for this chemical reaction is right here. And we'll take that and we put it into this little... Uh, K value right here to make different calculations. All right, so that's how you find the rate constant. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner, and that's going to subscribe to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.